place things jammed. Hello. Hey, baby, you party? You sure looking mighty fine. Love those big round eyes. Just who do you think you are? Hey, he's spunky. I'd like that in a lady. Okay, I'm hooked. Come on, Zal. I'll let you buy me that coffee. <laughs> I don't remember ever asking. Hey, don't play hard to get. I know you like it big time. Listen, kid. Go back home and play with your toy cars and forget you ever saw me. Good day to you, gentlemen. Tell me, young lady, to what do we owe this pleasure? Please do be brief. We do not have very much time on our hands. As rectors of this university, we have serious matters to attend to, and our time is precious. I have heard you wish to meet the owner of the train that is currently in your station. May I know the reason for your summons? We are surprised that your train has not yet left, miss. The situation is most regrettable. The rules do clearly state that trains are meant to come and go and not remain stationary at a platform. Trains should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. We agree then, dear colleagues, that what we're dealing with is deviant behavior. This matter really is cause for concern. It's a clockwork train, you see? So it needs winding up again? Unfortunately, there is no equipment in the station to do this. A clockwork train? That's strange. How very quaint. You mean it's some sort of mechanical toy? You are causing a hindrance to us, miss. I am very hopeful that I will find what I need along the wall. The wall? Uh, miss, that really is not a suitable place for you to go. Especially for a young lady. You see, miss, we freely admit that every day we praise the existence of that particular edifice. We owe the integrity of our dear university and the fine education it provides to the wall. It protects us from harm and invasion from the unknown. May God protect us from what is beyond those ramparts, miss. Please believe me. I don't have any choice. I must continue my journey. Uh, such a decision is a correct one since it's in line with regulations. Thus your train will indeed be able to leave and, consequently, cease to obstruct our station. I haven't introduced myself. My name is Kate Walker. 
Walker, Walker, haven't we already had a Miss Walker? Ethnology Masters, September 1953, if my memory serves me correctly. Perfectly well, my dear colleague. But if I may be so bold, it was a Mr. Walker and not a Miss. It was Bill Walker, sat this June 68 exams. The impudent fool turned up for the oral assessment in jeans, flouting strict internal regulations which explicitly state the required uniform for the occasion. Pure incitement. It was scandalous. Sadly, we have seen worse since. Young people lack all respect of traditional values. Tradition, young lady. One must always uphold tradition. You see, I didn't actually intend to stop here, but the springs of my train gave up, you see? No, not really. You mean to say you're not a student? You have arrived a little late in the term, Miss. Enrollment for this year has already terminated. But as rectors of this university, and therefore representatives of its highest authority, we could bend the rules a little, if you like. You don't understand. I'm a lawyer from New York. Or rather, Valadilen, more precisely. My client wants to buy out an old mechanical toy factory, but its heir isn't actually dead and is living somewhere in Siberia. I've got to get to him to sign the sales contract. You see? Not really. This is a most peculiar tale. A kerfuffle of the highest order. We have an excellent law school, if you should ever change your mind. Can you possibly help me out here? Miss, your insistence is almost verging on indecency. We cannot constantly be at your disposal. We have many other requests to attend to. If you don't mind, could you not disturb us all the time? Thank you. Does the name Hans Vorlberg mean anything to you by chance? Ah, one of the brightest, most idealistic intellects to have graced our university. Hans Vorlberg. I remember speaking to him once. I was still a student at the time. He just stared at me, lost in thought for a while. He scarcely ever said a word. But how can one forget him? Idealistic? I'll grant you that. But bright? Oh, don't go too far. He was completely incapable of passing any exams. All he ever did was to sit in on lessons, and not many of them either. Paleontology, mainly. He had an unhealthy passion for mammoths, which matched the state of his intellect perfectly. That is to say, prehistoric. Prehistoric? How dare you? A little far-fetched, maybe. But he did have flashes of intellectual brilliance, comprehensible only to high-minded scholars who hold no score by appearances. My dear colleague, your hasty conclusions are somewhat cavalier. My assessment is wholly accurate. The boy was a little odd. You must concur if my father, who was rector of the university at the time, had not shown great indulgence towards him. Hans Vorlberg would have never attended this establishment. What about the bandstand, then? Is that the work of a deranged mind? Even after all these years, you are still jealous of it. My dear colleagues, I beseech you, let's show some decorum. We have a visitor. Uh, what do you want with Hans Vorlberg, miss? Uh, are you a member of his family? No, no, not at all. I'm looking for him to clear up an inheritance matter. Is he still here? What? Here? At the university? <laughs> no, not at all. He left a long time ago. Yes, a very long time ago. The very year I was nominated to this position, in fact. Almost 50 years ago already. The poor soul moved on once he learned all he needed to know about mammoths. Ah, this establishment was never quite the same after his departure, it must be said. You mean to say it was never as bad? All that Oddball brought to this university was his misplaced fantasies. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's try to retain the calm and level-headedness that befits our position. <laughs>